Hello everyone, Schwartz Fiat here. And several months ago I posted a video called the Skyguard Cert Guide, but I wanted to create another one that has more up-to-date information and is ideally shorter. So let's just get into it. And for those that didn't watch the other video, basically I've been playing this game since beta and I've been obsessed with the Skyguard since day one, hence the Araxium Metal. So in this video I'm going to talk about the Lightning Certs as they pertain to the Skyguard. I don't really use the other weapons that much except for the Viper. So again, this is going to be a cert guide based around the Skyguard and how the other certs of the Lightning pertain to the Skyguard. First of all, when it comes to the weapon itself, These my pick of choice for the, the optic side. slot is the thermal optics. And this is for very good reason. When you're in a Skyguard, you're going to be hit a lot with explosions from enemy rockets and other things like that and the thermal optics pretty much make those explosions invisible while making the aircraft shooting you bright yellow. In fact, if you've never used thermal optics before, they are definitely worth it because again it turns all vehicles within range of course, it's a 180 meter range, turns them all bright yellow as well as all infantry units as well but makes explosions and a lot of foliage pretty invisible and this is very very helpful to you as a sky guard because one thing you'll have a lot is a bunch of aircraft coming in and rockets coming at you they're exploding everywhere and, ex and they're coming in the sky but when you can make those explosions almost invisible and your target bright yellow it really really helps a lot with aim there are optical zoom options up to three times but I really don't bother with that because while it could give you an advantage at range the sky guard really is not a long range killer that's one thing that needs to be made understood. It's for close range engagements. You can take pot shots on aircraft at long range, but it's ideally suited for closer range combat against aircraft. And with the optical zoom, I don't like the idea of having optical zoom and then an infantry soldier getting in close to me and not being able to use thermal optics to highlight his position if he takes cover and foliage. So, use what you want, but my recommendation is definitely a thermal optics. But, when it comes to the optical zoom, this can have its place, and the only time I would recommend using optical zoom would be if you're on top of a hill and you've got several friendly tanks and other things around you, so that no one's going to get close to you and you just want to be able to try to do some damage from a distance, particularly against Liberators, Galaxies, and Vol Valkyries, then it could be useful, but... If you intend to be in the fray and in the thick of things, definitely thermal optics. As far as reload speed, this is expensive, but if you're going to be dedicated to the Skyguard, this is le a half a second reduction when fully started to your reload speed, allowing you to reload in 2.5 seconds. It'll be up to you whether you feel that's worth it or not. Me, I just basically maxed it out because the Skyguard is my favorite weapon, so I might as well get every advantage possible. And without a doubt, ammunition capacity is extremely important. If you're curious as to what order of applying your search for the Skyguard weapon itself, I would recommend definitely recommend thermal optics as soon as possible. You can get a couple ranks of the uh, ammunition capacity because the first couple are cheap, but definitely try to search this out to max capacity as soon as possible. This gives you roughly 1700 shots to work with and in extended firefights I find myself coming very close to running out. And there was one incident in which I remember I was in a fight back when I didn't have this fully asserted and I ran out of ammo and the enemy tank that was trying to kill me was in flames. So if I had just had more ammo, I'd have lived. But yeah, definitely assert this as soon as possible, being as you will eat through the ammo a lot as a sky guard. Alright, now with regards to the utility slots. You have two options, the fire extinguisher and the infrared smoke. My recommendation is the fire extinguisher because this will repair 12% of your vehicle and will exterminate fires. And it basically allows you to heal 12% in the midst of battle. And some people may think, well, 12% is not that much. But one thing a lot of people don't know is when it comes to being shot by liberators, generally speaking, it takes three shots from a Dalton to kill you. But if you have the top armor defense slot and let's see, I go back. Yeah, the top armor defense slot 
as well as this fire extinguisher and use it at the proper time, it can actually make it so that a force shot is required to kill you. And in some Liberator fights I've been in, that's been the difference between life and death. In many, many fights, actually, the fire extinguisher has been the difference between life and death for me. Saved me on many occasions. Definitely worth fully asserting. But that's not to say the infrared smoke doesn't exactly is exactly useless. Again, as I mentioned with the infrared optics as opposed to optical zoom, infrared optics are definitely more useful if you're going to be in the thick of things and with lots of enemies around you in the same manner. Fire extinguisher is far more useful in that situation. But if you intend to keep range as a sky guard and stay out of the thick of things, so to speak, then infrared smoke can definitely be helpful because let's say you're out in there and the only things that are coming at you are lock-on missiles and you want to get as much shots off as possible without having to move at an aircraft in the air this could give you the extra time you need so again my recommendation infrared smoke if you're going to be fighting at long ranges but if you're going to be close definitely fire extinguisher and fully cert this as soon as possible because at max rank it'll only take 45 seconds before it can be used again and Sometimes, a couple fights I've had, I've needed to use it several times in a battle. So both of these are very good, but again, fire extinguisher for more close range stuff, and the infrared can be useful in long range. Of course, if you find yourself constantly being locked, then by all means go with the infrared smoke. It can be very useful. Alright, now for defense slots. There are a variety of defense slots for the light, and you have your automatic repair, vehicle stealth, mine guard, etc., etc. Not all of these, however, are useful to a sky guard, so let's just go through them quickly. First of all, you have the automatic repair. This is a system that can be very, very useful, and I use it on my medic character a lot. I don't use it with my engineer character because obviously I can get out and repair it. But this allows you to be a lot more mobile as a sky guard pilot and, you know, constantly be moving around. And more importantly, it allows you to keep your attention on the air and because you'll be repairing yourself, whereas there have been many times when I'm not using this, I've had to get out and repair, and then an aircraft was able to sneak up on me. So automatic repair definitely has its advantage there in allowing you to be able to keep your attention on the sky and not have to get out for repairs. I mean, you can still get out if it's a vital situation that you get repaired quickly, but generally speaking, this is a very good one for if you're going to be constantly moving around or there's aircraft making hit and run attacks and you need to always be ready to have your gun aimed in the sky now to get them. Next up we have vehicle stealth and this is going to be expensive to fully cert and the big advantage of vehicle stealth only comes when fully certed but man is it ever worth it. I have some of the most fun ever with vehicle stealth because it is very very helpful to you in survival and not only that it's really funny and gets you some amazing kills there's a video I have on my channel that's called why S vehicle stealth is worth fully certing and that video is short I think not even a minute long maybe a half a minute but it pretty much sums up why vehicle stealth on a stock guy guard is amazing but to be more specific here you don't show up on the mini map until you fire and as a sky guard you are on a lightning tank and a lightning tank by default is very weak so the fact that aircraft and particularly in more importantly tanks don't immediately see you on radar allows you to make better use of cover and one thing that I find that this is really useful for use or uh, a situation I find that stealth armor is really useful for is if you get yourself in a position where enemy aircraft tend to retreat over you can get some nice kills on injured aircraft you know a lot of times I position myself in an area where aircraft are flying over I'll wait, I'll let them come in, do their strike, because I know I'm not going to kill them, and then when they start to turn around, boom, that's when I finish them off. A lot of funny kills like that, or just fun kills in general, but again, this can allow you to get some really good kills because the enemy aircraft have no idea what's coming, but more importantly, it allows you to kind of pick and choose your targets, because when you have liberators or large swarms of aircraft, they can tear you apart very quickly, but if you just hold your fire and are in cover and have stealth armor, you can stay alive a lot longer. It's very advantageous. and In particular, it keeps tanks' attention off of you, which is absolutely vital. Mine guard? Oh, man. I really do not recommend this one bit for a sky guard. 
I mean, yes, there has been many times my Sky Guard has been killed by mines, but generally speaking, for what you as a Sky Guard are going to do, Mine Guard is not really suiting to your interest because there's other s options, like we've already talked about and like we will talk about, that are far more useful. The same is true with the front armor and the side armor. I have never used these on a Sky Guard, and I don't think my I ever will. Because again, the other ones are far more useful. So, to recap, Mine Guard, Side Armor, and Front Armor, I do not recommend for a Sky Guard. I mean, if you want to, by all means, but I've just been using the Sky Guard ever since launch day, and I've never seen any useful purpose for using this on a Sky Guard. Now, this, however, the proximity radar is by far one of the most useful things for a Sky Guard. Because one thing that a lot of people like to do, uh, and if you ever play Planet Side for any length of time, you know this, is they like to see for you with the light assault. The Sky Guard, however, can kill light assaults with ease in the air. So when you're sitting there in your position or, you know, looking up to the skies, you don't have all time to be paying attention to that ground around you. So proximity radar allows you to know immediately if someone's coming and trying to put C4 on you. And I can't even count the times that this has saved my life. And as sad as it may seem, there have been sometimes like three or four kills in a row that has been nothing but people trying to C4 me, but their position was revealed with the proximity radar. It is definitely very, very useful if you intend to keep your eye in the sky, so to speak, but want to know if there's any infantry coming around. It also serves very useful for when you need to repair. You can get yourself into a position, and if you have it fully sorted, you know that for at least 50 meters, there's no infantry around to shoot you. I mean, you still want to be keep moving around to avoid a sniper shot, but this is definitely a very useful system. It only works while you're in the vehicle, of course, but again, this is the system I use the most, actually because that extra warning that you have when someone's trying to put C4 down or lay down mines it means the difference between life and death. This is definitely worth fully serving as a Skyguard pilot. Lastly we have the top armor. This surprisingly is something that I very rarely use. It reduces damage to the top part by 10 percent which again like I say when used in combination with the fire extinguisher can actually help you survive a couple more hits, so I'll admit there are some times that this has saved my life. But generally speaking, my personal preference is stealth or proximity radar to know where the enemies are coming from or to hide from the enemies in general. I find those personally far more useful than a 10% damage reduction on the top of the tank. However, it does have its uses. If you're advancing in a huge armor column and there's a lot of aircraft and not much enemy armor around, this can help you, like I say, survive a couple more hits, particularly usually one more hit if you time your fire extinguisher use right from a Dalton, which can mean the difference between life and death between you and the Liberator. But yeah, this is definitely something I would only recommend if you're going in large groups or that kind of thing. But if you just want to use it in general and find that you don't want to bother with stealth armor or deal with proximity radar. It's not a bad system at all. I mean, it's 10% damage reduction from the top side, which is where aircraft are going to be hitting you. Do note, however, it offers no protection to the rear, so keep an eye out for liberators, because one thing a lot of Skyguard pilots may not be aware is that when a liberator pilot comes behind you with the tank buster, it is possible to kill you with one clip. But yeah, those are the defense slots in a nutshell. A couple useful ones, and then some that aren't very useful. And then you have the performance. Quite honestly, the only thing that I've ever used on a Skyguard is the high-speed racer chassis. And the reason for this is it increases acceleration and top speed. When you find yourself under fire or like tanks coming after you or that kind of thing, the top speed can be very, very useful in getting away and getting to cover. But the main advantage here is the acceleration speed increase. When you find that you're under fire by rockets, the ability to quickly get in gear and start moving can save you from being hit by several rockets, which means a lot more health to you. The ability to turn around really is 
or the ability to turn faster, which the other chassis gives you, I just don't think is personally worth it. Because again, acceleration is key. Because when you come under fire, as weak as the lightning is in general, you need to get out of that fire. And generally speaking, backing up is what I tend to do, which allows a lot of rockets just to hit the ground near me and not do any damage. While I can switch to my infrared optics, make the explosion and rockets invisible, and highlight that aircraft bright yellow, and start opening fire on it and usually bring it down. So yeah, I don't need to elaborate much on that. This is more speed and more acceleration, which is v far, far more useful to a Sky Guard. I suppose, I guess, the ability to turn quicker and all that could have its uses, but I just honestly cannot recommend it as a Sky Guard. I just can't. <laughs> but anyways, hopefully that was a little more concise and shorter and to the point than the other video. And hopefully you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.